Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized business in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist and a research engineer in telecommunications and filed several patents. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you regarding uh, the selection of Barack Obama's uh, uh, cabinet uh, through an email that was sent to John Podesta from Michael Froman of Citibank. And what he put in this email was, that, at the risk of being presumptuous, I also scoped out how the cabinet level appointments might be put together, probably weighting the likelihood of appointing a diverse candidate for each position, given one view of the short list, and coming up with a straw man distribution. Obviously, multiple permutations of this are possible. This was just one example of how it might pan out. So uh, what does this list look like? Well, um, in order to look at that, you might want to think about what our friend uh, Mr. Chris Cuomo at CNN warned us. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. And in full disclosure, let's take a look at what is in there and what it means. Joining us now, CNC. No. Also interesting. Uh, it's quite extraordinary that he would try to uh, scare us all in this fashion. And I can assure you it's not illegal to read WikiLeaks. However, um, it is annoying that it's an attachment, which takes it one level beyond reading. Uh, so and if you have a clever browser, it'll let you view the attachment. I had to download it first, uh, which I wasn't particularly happy about. So what does this attachment consist of? Well, here you have it. This is their original document, the uh, attachment that shows who Michael Froman, at the risk of being presumptuous, sent. Now, there are four or five articles that I'll give you links to that discuss this. And the one that I found most insightful about, who is Michael Froman? Well, now he's our trade representative. Uh, he is himself uh, uh, joined this list right here under USPR. Uh, most of these guys rotated after the first term. And um, so let's take a look. Uh, what did they actually outcome turn out to be? Um, so at the heart of it all for me is Tim Geithner, protege of Larry Summers, who is protege of Robert Rubin. Robert Rubin is um, uh, the, the original Secretary of Treasury for Clinton, he made his name at Goldman Sachs and then went on to take on Citigroup. And as you see, what I would call his choices, barring any other explanation, everyone in bold here, uh, represent uh, uh, Rubin's forces. So and there's an interesting article I found when I was trying to look into this. Robert Rubin's Wall Street Colt. So you should take a look at that article. It's actually a very serious and normal article. Um, nothing that would uh, shock you. Uh, and very well written um, by a clear-minded individual. Um, and uh, let me take credit for everything he says right, and then I deny any culpability if I mistake. I was mistaken, and he erred in some fashion. But I was impressed by his description of so-called Robert Rubin cult. Um, so you can I, uh, access this document I created. There's a, he, but basically, in all the key positions of real power, he cleaved to this uh, center, uh, I, I would say on foreign policy right, and on domestic policy neoliberal, uh, you know, deregulation, uh, less taxes, um, and um, more free trade things who don't really help the American worker. And then it's interesting, the ones he did pick, he took labor, uh, Obama did, and, and deviated from the script, agriculture, small business, but all the key positions were uh, either immediately occupied or eventually occupied by the nominees on their list, except for CIA. And if you were president, who's the one guy you'd want to make sure would never screw you, I don't know that uh, that was his motivation, but that's what occurs to me when everyone else uh, was part of this clinton Rubin gang or the Bush gang in the sense that we've got Gates here in defense. Uh, and then, of course, in CIA later on, we end up with Petraeus. 
And um, so there you have it. Um, now, the other interesting connection to make is Tim Geithner's phone calls. So this whole thing, you know, Michael Froman, City Bank, uh, Geithner, protege of uh, Ruben and Summers, uh, Goldman Sachs, City Bank connection. Um, uh, but if we look at Geithner's phone call during the uh, crisis and we extrapolate from that, I mean, the, the two guys he talked to the most were, I think, Robert Rubin, Larry Fink, and I'm sure uh, Larry Summers. Uh, you can go back and look yourself. Uh, and um, so I did some research before about who controls the United States, and this dovetails so much of the research I did before, which was not meant to be conspiratorial. It's just looking at who owns what shares in public companies. Now, I'm hoping this won't jam our system here. Uh, doesn't appear to be good. Um, so, <clears throat> this is a slide on media ownership. Five big media companies, each of them in turn controlled by an even bigger company. So, anybody having any oxygen is uh, very low because in order to express opinion at the Wall Street Journal level, you'd actually have to buy a $50 billion company at this time, not a $5 billion. A lot of these media companies were weak, could have easily been taken over. They're not very profitable, but they're all owned by massive companies who it's in their interest to influence public opinion. Um, now, uh, Time Warner is not that big company at the time of this, but General Electric certainly was, although it spun off. But this makes Comcast an extremely dangerous company to American democracy because they have a huge cash cow over here that we'll defend this forever. And the same with Disney and ABC. And ABC, CBS, Comcast, Time Warner, all of these have uh, uh, worked uh, on the Clinton side, whether for good or for ill. Um, there's a lot ill here with the neoliberal side. Um, but uh, it seems that we have the devil in the deep blue sea. We've either got right-wing Republicans or centrist Democrats who are really have all the worst aspects of moderate Republicans or even worse. So it's sort of like nastier than moderate Republicans versus extreme Republicans are the two uh, choices we have, in my opinion. When you go and look at General Allen's speech at the Democratic uh, Convention, it's pretty shocking. So. These are the guys who control all the money in the world at the time I did this snapshot. Uh, this is 15 trillion assets under management. It's more than all the Fortune 500 companies put together. Assets under management. These are fund managers, massive private equity firms, and you, you guys can have access to all of this. These are the biggest companies in the world uh, in terms of assets under management, total raw assets. So uh, private wealth uh, at that time was 32 um, trillion is it, or a billion? I'm not sure. I think that'll be 32 trillion. Yeah, uh, pension funds 30 trillion. So you see, we're creating all these funds problems for ourselves. This whole pension mutual fund insurance is really our money. That's 80 trillion dollars that could be invested in uh, local farmers and uh, bricklayers and uh, uh, universities, but is instead all being concentrated in the hands of the Fortune five hundred type investments. Now obviously uh, private equity firms 1.6 trillion uh, is going to be this sort of aggressive uh, stuff but we've got all of our uh, doddering old professors and teachers investing in the very things that are killing off our uh, middle class. Um, so of those companies you haven't even probably heard of BlackRock uh, or State Street. BlackRock is uh, CEO is Larry Fink, or at least he was when I did this, and uh, he was described. So here was a slide I did about how I was mapping things. And these were the guys driving war, these types of industries, and uh, driving lobbyists um, and um, other influences on our uh, officials. Uh, and um, this was how I was producing this terrible war and invasion economy. Um, this is a quick look at what Bank of America gobbled up. And then here is uh, my slide dealing with uh, Larry Fink specifically. He's like the Wizard of Oz. Uh, I'll shrink this down a bit. Um, but this is just panels dealing with the the mysterious Larry Fink. So here he is, the, uh, the guy that Larry Geithner is talking to alongside, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Tim Geithner is talking alongside Robert Rubin. 
Um, so I consider this rather disturbing. Um, I don't know about you folks. Um, and you can find all this in my old work uh, on my website. You'll see screenshots. Uh, uh, but this is like, who owns the media? Uh, so at any rate, um, I guess I'll leave it there. Uh, I hope the rest of you can find out how did Michael Froman come up with this list? Who contributed it to it? And we've got Larry Fink, Robert Rubin, Michael Froman. How did this list get set up? Doesn't it look like uh, the people were completely left out of the cabinet planning process? Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good night and good luck.